Hello everybody. We're going to get started in just a few minutes. If you can hear me, please put a one in the chat and let me know. Just going to wait a few more minutes to see if any more people come in. But please put a one in the chat if you can hear me good. Okay, we're just waiting a few more minutes and then we'll get started. I want to make sure that everybody that I invited comes in and they don't miss any part of the live lecture. But yes, thanks for coming everybody. We have another we have another lecture coming up or it's actually the second half of our previous lecture that we did on September the 26th. We, we did a WooCommerce demo, and we also covered several digital marketing tips to help boost sales conversions on your e-commerce website. So in, this, in the next half of our lecture, we are going to talk about how to give your users a stellar user experience, how to make your site easy for your customers to find what they want and just for easy for them to navigate in general. And then we're also going to talk about some extensions for WooCommerce that will make that will make your. Uh, we're also going to talk about some extensions for WooCommerce that are going to help make the user experience better. Please give me just a few more minutes, and we will start the lecture. I don't expect I don't expect this lecture to be too long versus the last one because. In the last lecture, we did a demo, and it did take quite a while, but it shouldn't take as long this time. So we should, this one should be done within the hour or so. I do want to make this big announcement too that due to the poor numbers and due to the poor attendance numbers I've been seeing in some of these streams, there is a good chance that I might discontinue CDG TV because people are not tuning into the live streams. And I may just stick with focusing only on podcasts. And let me also make another announcement about the last podcast we uploaded which was the second half on how to turn your angry customers into happy customers. That episode only got 18 views. So right now, the future of the podcast is looking pretty murky too, too due to bad numbers. So there is a good chance that if I don't see better numbers within the next set of podcasts coming up, I may be putting that aside too. I don't want to waste my time putting out content that people aren't going to be listening or watching. I want to instead focus on other types of content that will get people engaged. I don't, yes, Lauren, I see what you're saying. Don't discontinue the podcast. I know you don't want the podcast to go and I don't want to see them go either, but they're not bringing in the numbers. Now, maybe the last episode was just a fluke. Maybe only having 18 views was just a fluke. Maybe people thought I was re-uploading the same episode because it has the same thumbnail and the title is hidden somewhat. That could be the reason why I didn't get a lot of listeners for that one. I'm not I'm not I haven't decided to discontinue CDG Bizcast as of now. It is going to continue. It's not going anywhere for the moment. But I'm just saying that if I don't see higher numbers than than 17 or 18 listeners within the next i don't know four episodes go and because after about four or five episodes from now we're going to be going into 2023 things are going to be a lot different then we'll see i'm not going to in the bizcast right now but if somewhere down the road if i see that the podcast is not getting the listeners or or good numbers of listeners and i'm expecting I just don't see any more 
I just don't see any reason to continue investing time with it. It does take a lot of time to edit podcasts. It takes at least three days to edit one episode. And being on the last episode that we taped was ended up being about two hours long. That one's going to take me even longer to edit. And if I just if I just don't see the numbers where I want them to be, I may have to make that decision to end the show. And I don't want to do that. Right now, it's too soon. It's too soon to make a decision on that. And I am uh, yes, I'm, I'm reading. I'm reading the chat too. Flying Dutchman, I see that we only have 47 subscribers, and that's true. We're still growing the channel. That's another reason why I'm not going to give up on the BizCast so easily. All the episodes we've put out so far have ranged anywhere between 30 to 40 listeners per episode. The last episode only got 18, 18 views, and my theory on that is may have been because people may have thought that I re-uploaded the same episode again because it has the same thumbnail and it has the same title. It just has the words part two appended to it. And you can't see the words part two in the description in the YouTube search results because it's hidden due to, due to the title being rather long. It gets truncated by YouTube. So maybe we've got people, we've got people still who didn't realize that it was a new episode. And Lauren, yes, I'm 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 not getting rid of the podcast. It's not going anywhere right now. I don't have any plans to discontinue it anytime soon. We're gonna keep doing our thing. We're going to keep recording new episodes. The episode that we have coming this week that we did with Plush Boy Q is going to be a banger. It was very it was it was it was different than the ones that we're used to doing. You know that normally our our show is very serious. We don't really do any joking around and or anything too entertaining. It's all about being educational and trying to educate the business world. But this last episode we did definitely broke that rule. And I'm looking forward to putting it out there because we did have a blast recording that episode. And I look forward to putting it out on the channel. So, Lauren, don't. I don't want you to think that I'm getting rid of the podcast right now. I was just simply saying that there is a possibility if I if somewhere way down the road in the future that I don't see more views on the show that I would discontinue. But it's not going anywhere. I need this podcast for business purposes. Even if I don't have people listening on YouTube, there are people who might be listening on other platforms because this – the podcast is syndicated on iTunes and Facebook Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. It is on all the major platforms. So I'm not just going to discontinue because the last episode only got a few little views. We're not done with the BizCast. It's not going anywhere. I'm just going to keep recording episodes. I'm going to keep inviting you guys on to do the show. And we're going to continue to have a good time. I'm not going to let the views worry me right now. I'm just saying that this stuff is co is very costly in terms of time because editing is not the only thing that I have to do. I have to handle client appointments. I have to handle other marketing matters. And I just don't want to invest too much time into something that people are probably not listening to. But it's too soon for me to make that judgment right now. As of right now, it's still going to keep going. We're still going to keep making episodes. We're going to have a good time. And I certainly look forward to having you guys on the next BizCast as soon as it get, when it comes time to record another episode. And, okay, that, and it, I'm going to go ahead and stop, you know, stop talking about that. We're going to go ahead and jump into the lecture now. Let me just go down the list. Hi, Hope. Hi, Sarah. Welcome to the show. Thanks, guys, for coming. Is it if there is anybody else in the chat right now who has not who has not said hello to, or has made their presence known? Please let me know that you're here. I just want to know who is attending my streams because. 
I have a lot of I have a lot of material for the business owners to share today, and I want to make sure that some of the people I specifically invited showed up so they can so they can so they can know so they can also learn from this material. There is a we have a lot more to cover about WooCommerce and marketing and how to make your online store better for the customer and for yourself. So this drummer, welcome in. Okay. Here we go. Let's go ahead and jump right into the lecture. Now, this lecture does not have a demo like our last one did. It's just going to be me talking and explaining several different several different things that that business owners can try. I've got a, I've got a load of tips to share for business owners who want to improve the experience for their customers who browse their stores and shop on them but i've also got some tips for how store owners can better manage their online stores to make things easier on them whenever they get orders and stuff like that it's important to make sure that your customers are happy but also that you the business owner is not getting is not getting overwhelmed because trust me if you're if you if you're running your your business by yourself and you don't have a team, maybe you're a one person show, it gets overwhelming, and you end up getting into you end up you end up falling into a spaghetti bowl of endless tasks that you have to do, and one of those tasks that you could easily for, that you could easily forget to do because you're busy handling other stuff is fulfilling orders that are coming into your store. So you don't want that to happen. You want to make sure that you have a way to manage your store, make sure that pe that you're able to keep track of every order that comes in and you're getting them shipped out on time. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the lecture and hope I'm sorry that you can't stay. I hope you feel better later, but thanks for coming. So now let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and jump into our lecture for today. Give me just a moment while I pull that up. Okay. So we covered in our previous lecture, just to reiterate from last time, we did a demo of WooCommerce and how it works and how to set up the online store. And we also covered several marketing tips to help you engage with your customers and convert views to sales. Now we're going to talk about how to give your customers a stellar user experience, how to make your online stores as easy to navigate and use for your customer as humanly possible. You don't want your customers pulling up your store and then they and then they struggle to browse your store. Maybe they have trouble even finding a certain section they want to go to, or maybe they just can't find the information they're looking for. They just simply don't know how to browse your store. And we're going to... so. We, if, if you have a store that is poorly set up and is hard on the customer to manage and or hard on the customer to browse and to find what they're looking for, they're going to leave your site. They're going to go somewhere else. So now we're going to talk about how to give your customers a stellar user experience. So here are, here are a few ways. Here are a few ways to recommend products to your customers within your online store. You want to rec you want to recommend some products to them up front that they may have interest in. Maybe it is a popular product that many people are buying. For example, maybe you're trying to 
you're trying to understand what the customer is looking for and you're using AI to predict that. So the first thing you can use are search queries. So in your store, if you analyze your store's SEO and you're starting to look at what pages are popular, what products people are buying, what they're searching for daily, just looking at the analytics in the back end of your store, you can find out which uh, you can find out which products to start recommending to the public. What are your hot sellers? The products that have high demand are the ones that should have prominence on your site's homepage to ensure that visitors who are seeking it can find it immediately. So, if you have if you're starting to realize that you have a product in your store that is selling like crazy, it's selling like hotcakes. And, it's sell, and you're selling so much of that product that you're running low on stock. And we've talked about that in our previous lecture. Advertise it on your homepage. Make sure that it's, it's in the big banner area on your homepage or under your featured product section, something like that. So that way, the people that the, your customers who are, the, who are trying to find this product can easily find it. They don't have to search everywhere to try to find it. It's right there. The moment they pull up your website, all they have to do is click on it and place their order. That's it. You don't want your most popular products get, to get buried under products that are not as popular and are not selling as hotly as your popular products are. Also remember to have options in your website for purchase history. Customers who register on your website and have accounts within your store should be recommended products that are based on the purchases that they have made in the past. So for example, if you own a bookstore, maybe you have one, maybe you've had a customer who purchased a book on, on learning Photoshop. Now you can recommend a book to that same customer on how to use Adobe Illustrator to complement their Photoshop book. Think about that. In the graphic design world, Photoshop and Illustrator are used are used hand in hand, and that's what we use here at CDG. So that's think about your customers who are buying books and offer them a book that's related to what they previously purchased. Another example: Let's say somebody is buying a pair of shoes on your website. Recommend them a nice pair of socks to go with it, or some shoelaces. Keep your customer shopping carts in mind. Rec try to upsell them something in their shopping cart just like I mentioned just like I mentioned here it, you can also upsell them these complimentary items within their shopping cart as well for example did they buy ice did they buy a gallon of ice cream in the shopping cart upsell them and ask them if they would like some cones to go with it or some sprinkles upselling will help you see sales numbers grow you'll see revenue grow the only way that you won't see any sales grow would be if you're not taking part in this strategy. You want to upsell. If you don't upsell, then they're only going to buy what they put in their cart and nothing more. Analyze so your activity on social media. So here you'll want to analyze your consumer behavior within your store, just like you would have done with the search queries I just mentioned. Look at your social media analytics. Which products are your hot sellers? Look at look at their reviews. Look look to see if they are placed on your customer's wish list quite frequently. And how many times was this product shared or mentioned on social media? And these are the products you're going to want to place prominently on your homepage. Just and then after that, watch the money just come rolling in. You have it right there, advertised up front on the homepage where people can see it, and they don't have to dig everywhere for it. Also, take your customer's geographic location in mind. Now, this method can be a hit or miss depending on how many of your customers have their locations turned on in their browsers and on their phones. But you can recommend products to your customers based on when they're located. So, for example, if you own a clothing store, you can recommend jackets to someone who lives in a cold area like Canada or somewhere up north where it's always cold and you're going to need a jacket. You can recommend products based on location. You'll also want to make sure 
that your online store's performance is up to par. Make sure that it loads within three seconds or less. Sites that load very slowly turn people off. They are not going to sit and wait. If you go any more than three seconds, personally, I believe three seconds alone is too long. But in general, if, you, if your site is not loading within three seconds and it's taken a long time for even the first picture to load up or you just see a blank page for more than three seconds, they're going to hit the back button. They're going to go back to their Google search results and they will never return to your site. They'll go find a competitor who has a better website instead. Keep in mind that Google also penalizes websites that are slow and pushes them further and further down the search results. The search engine result pages or SERPs, they'll eventually blacklist them. Website speed is a ranking factor. And then you can check and see how fast your site loads by using gtmetrics.com. And if we have time, we will do a demo doing just that later. If you're, if you're launching an online store for the first time, test it out with your friends and family before you launch it. Just, just have it available only to where they can view it. And it is possible to, to have your website available to certain users with a username and password where you can just provide the username and password to certain people who you want to see it, but you don't have to launch it towards the public. This is called usability testing. You'll ask your test group, what did they like about your site? What did they not like? What made the site difficult for them to use? Was your test group able to locate sections of the website that they wanted to find or the products they were seeking? Those are important questions to ask your focus group. When you're doing a usability test, consider these factors. Consider navigation. Make sure that your site is extremely easy to browse through. And the best way to do this is to make sure that you have what's called a silo structure, which means that all of your site's content is interlinked together. This will also help improve your site's SEO because it shows, it tells Google that your website has structure, meaning that if they go to this page, is there a sequential page that they'll, they'll click on next? Does it follow a sequence? Having pages that follow a sequence is good for your SEO. It tells Google that there's some content there. That's what it means to have a silo structure. Take clarity in mind too. Make sure that each page, especially the home page, and this is especially a hundred times more important on the home page versus other pages, that it looks clean. It's straightforward and it's free of anything that's distracting. Any graphical elements that you have on your page should aid and not distract from the message being delivered. You want to avoid using autoplay videos or background music as these things can startle your users because it'll catch them off guard. If they get startled, they're not going to bother with your site. They view that as, an, as a nuisance. They're going to go somewhere else. Make sure you have a very simple shopping cart. Make sure it's easy to navigate and easy to find and make sure that your checkout process has as little steps as possible. The less steps that you have for your checkout process, the easier it is for your customer to, to basically finish the process and pay for their item versus having to go through all these different steps. Make sure it is so easy that a child could do it. Well, we're going to talk more about that later. You'll want to showcase the most important products properly. Yes, I said they need to be prominent, but make sure that they are shown prominently and properly. So think about which products or categories are the most popular, as I said before, and focus on the ones that are selling the most. Look at this example here from eBay. It has a slider right there on the, this is when you pull up the homepage. The first thing you see is a slider. This slider has several different pictures of popular items. In this case, it is NHL trading cards. Make sure that it has a call to action. You see how it has a button there that says go to top shelf? A slider without a call to action is useless. Make sure there's a button that they can click on that will take them to a page that has these items for sale. Otherwise, they're left on their own to search for the, the specific item or group of items. You're just making it harder on your customer at that point. Personalize the user experience by showing their recently viewed products. As we see here, directly below, 
the directly below the banner is a list of recently viewed items. If you view this product on their website, it puts it right there and only the specific user will see that. It customizes the user experience. It does some hyper-targeting for this one specific logged in user. They, they were looking at speakers, for example. There it is. Those are the speakers and the amplifiers they were looking at. On your own website, set up a dedicated section to showcase the, your hot sellers or featured products. The ones that you know you want to sell that will sell, that will sell like hotcakes and have, have a high demand. Make sure that you have them showcased prominently and separate them from, from low priority products. This will allow the user to focus on the former category over the latter, the high priority over the low priority. The ones that you know are selling are the ones that you want to focus on. Make sure you optimize the search results within your site. When you, when you set up WooCommerce, it comes with a built-in search engine that will allow people that will allow people to search for products within your site. Make sure it displays results as accurately as possible. Make sure it has it, it can automatically correct simple human errors such as typos. You don't want your search results to show zero simply because the person who did the search misspelled one word in their query. Instead, make sure that it corrects the spelling of, of the misspelled word and displays all the products related to the search query. Otherwise, you'll lose out on sales because of zero results. The customer is going to, who probably isn't going to check their spelling, is going to assume that you don't have the product in mind. It you don't, you don't have the product for sale, and they'll go somewhere else. Make sure search suggestions are turned on, such as in the example here from Micro Center. Search suggestions ensure that the customer is able to access the product they're seeking right away. You'll notice here, Apple Mac Mini is the query that's being typed in, and then it gives suggestions for products related to it. It gives you a link to go to the product itself and also for brands and categories. See how easy it is to, for them to find an Apple Mac Mini? All they have to do is click on the first suggestion, which simply says Mac Mini, and it will take them there. So now that's one less click and one less page they have to browse to find the product they want. All they have to do is click on the, li on the link in the suggestions. Make sure your shopping cart is as simple as possible. This goes back to what I was saying earlier. Streamline your checkout process. It should have as little steps or click as possible. You can use a sidebar for checkout that shows a complete overview of what your customer's cart, such as in the example shown on the left here. When they click on the cart, instead of a new page loading up, a simple no-frill sidebar slides out from the right-hand side, giving an overview of what is in the customer's cart and also how much, how much everything is in. It gives a subtotal of the value of every product in their cart, and it gives you the option to continue shopping or to or to check out. And you don't have to go to, to another page to view it. It's all right there. So that makes things easier for your customer. They don't have to keep jumping back and forth between pages. So if they were busy browsing a certain category of products, they don't have to go to the cart or open it in the new tab. It's right there. They close it. And then, bam, they're right back to the page they were looking at. Not only does it make it easier for them to view everything that's in their cart, but it also makes it easier for them to edit their order at any time without having to search the entire site for the shopping cart. That's another thing. You don't want them to have to look everywhere to find the cart. Make sure your shopping cart can hold every purchase that your customer is making. Don't only allow them to buy one at a time. There are websites that have done that. Not so much anymore now, but back in the day when when e-commerce was barely becoming a thing. Some websites to this day still have not caught on. They are still requiring that for you to buy one item at a time versus allowing you to add multiple items to your cart and pay for one, for one whole set of items. 
back then you had to pay and check out one item at a time and then go back at it again. And it was just a big hassle. Make sure your website is not one of those sites. It just makes things frustrating for your customer. Always make sure you have the option for guest checkouts because this reduces the number of steps in the checkout process. There are people who don't want to make an extra account. It can be a hassle for some people when they're going in to check out and they see that an account is required. So now, before they even hit the checkout button, they are required to create a username and password, fill out their personal information, add their credit card, and that just probably takes a good extra five minutes to get set up. And then after registering it, it returns the customer back to their cart. By then, the customer's probably frustrated, and before they even fill out the form, they may have saw that they didn't even want to fill it out to begin with. They're just going to leave. They're just going to leave their cart as is. They're going to abandon it, and they're going to go find another website that has the products they want, where it's easier for them to check out. They'll go to a competitor who has guest checkout available, where they don't have to sign up for an account. All they have to do is add the add their uh, products to the cart, register. I, I mean, not register fill out their personal information with their credit card, and that's it. Nothing more. Sometimes the registration process can take a little longer. So make sure that you all, you have the option for guest checkout, but also keep in mind that registering for an account within your website has benefits too. It has benefits, but it can hinder sales due to the extra steps that require the customer to leave your site, such as to verify an email. That's what I mean. When they make an account, they may have to leave your site, go to their email so they can verify their account, that was which was a required step during the registration process, then come back to your site and finish checking out. By then, the customer is probably already tired. User accounts can have benefits such as order tracking. So if you place an order, it keeps it on file in your account for you to pull up later. And also for the, but regardless of that, the store owner can still pull it up, but it also makes things easier for your user, for your customer, if they can also keep track of everything they purchased. It also saves their personal information for future purchases. The next time they decide to buy something on your store, all they have to do is check out and they don't have to fill out any more forms. But of course, you want to keep your guest checkout in mind because it does keep your customer base in mind who like to keep things as simple as humanly possible. You don't want to lose out on possible sales because you didn't keep them in mind. Make sure you offer multi-recipient functionality, which basically means to have the ability to send a gift to someone. So if you're buying something for someone, maybe you you want to have it set up to where you're the billing, you're the bit you where you're in charge, you want the purchase to get billed to yourself, you know, on the billing address. But then you want to have a shipping address, which could be to your customer. You'll notice on any e-commerce site, the checkout process includes forms for both billing and shipping. And if you're buying something for yourself, billing and shipping are usually always the same. But if you're buying something for someone, you would put your address for billing and you would put whoever you're buying the gift for their shipping address. So you want to make sure you have the ability to gift someone, especially around the holiday season. This is going to be important. The holiday season's coming up. You want to make sure that your customers have the ability to send gifts to their friends and family. Make sure you have this option in your website to be able to send, to send a gift to someone. Make sure billing and shipping address forms are prominent in the checkout process. If you don't have that, just expect them to go to your competitors instead. Now we are on the second lecture. Now we're going to talk about some must-have WooCommerce extensions to help make your WooCommerce store better for both you and your customer. Our lecture is almost over. This is the last part of it. The first one is called New Order Notification for WooCommerce. These are all WordPress plugins and that serve as extensions to WooCommerce. So you have to have WooCommerce installed first before you can use these. New order notification for WooCommerce simply creates a separate page 
within your WordPress dashboard that shows all the orders that were recently placed on your site. And it, and it shows it in real time. The moment an order is placed, it, it will show it in this list. You'll get the order number, the date and time that the order was placed, the status. Is it still processing? Is it on hold? Is it being shipped out? And it also gives you a link with more details on the order. Other features of this plugin include the order page, which shows all the orders in one place, one centralized place. Some pop-up notifications within the WordPress admin bar letting you know when someone has placed an order and also a bell sound that will go off when uh, when somebody has placed an order, only to only heard by the admin of the website. Now, without this plugin, you might miss out on an order that comes in, which could result in you never fulfilling it, and that can result in a very, very angry customer demanding a refund. Make sure you always know when an order is coming in on your website. You don't want to fall behind. The holiday season gets very, very busy. So you'll want to keep track of all these orders as much as you can. WooCommerce PDF invoices and packing slips is a simple plugin that eliminates the need for you to have to create invoices and packing slips for each customer by hand. This plugin generates it for you for each order that comes in. Can you imagine how annoying it would be if you had to create a separate invoice and packing slip in Microsoft Word or another program by hand for every single order? They would mean that you'd have to scroll through each order list and then type out each item individually. And it, it's just very time consuming and it slows down your process of fulfilling orders. This plugin generates the invoice and the packing slip within within WooCommerce. So all you have to do is print it out, send it to your customer. And on top of that, the invoices are also attached to the, uh, to the customer's final order. When they pull up their final order, they'll have the ability to download it and they'll also get it emailed to them too. So that it does something, it streamlines the process even easier. It's one less thing that you have to do. WooCommerce is taking care of it for you if you have this installed. And on top of that, you can also customize your invoices and packing slips to include your store's logo on them. So that's a nice way to add some custom branding to your slips and invoices. Another plugin called Sequential Order Numbers organizes all of the orders that you receive on the admin panel by number. So if you want them to go in sequential order, such as one, two, three, four, five, this plugin allows you to do just that. So if your store already has several orders already in it before you even install the plugin, the numbering starts with the highest current order number. And if your store has no orders before you install it, the very first order will, that comes in will be set to number one. The thank you page customizer for WooCommerce. This one is a very is a very important one in my eyes because you're making you're making things more more personable for the customer. It allows you to personalize each order and give an overview of the purchase that they made. So, what ha what this plugin does is that after an order is placed, a custom thank you page is shown with a custom message that you, the store owner, sets and gives an overview of everything that was purchased. And it also gives you the option to write a coupon code to the customer and some links to follow your store on social media. Some best practices that I can recommend would be to include customer service numbers on these thank you pages, as well as emails, offer some custom coupon codes and encourage reviews. Reviews... Reviews and encourage people to come to your store and buy stuff there. You can see more sales come in simply because someone left a nice five-star review for you. Offering custom coupon codes allows this one customer who made a purchase or encourages this one customer who made a purchase to come back and, and make another purchase because now they have a discount. 
And here is a quick demo showing you how to set this page up and how it looks. That's just the activation process. And it goes through it pretty quickly. You can set the order status for which pages you want it to show on. You can set your coupon code. You can set what you can set how much you want off with that code, how much you want off the original price, and all sorts of different settings, such as limits, how much a minimum spending amount. Coupon codes are a great way to encourage repeat business from one customer alone. You just want to be, you don't want to, you don't want to give a discount that will result in you not making a profit. As I said in the previous lecture, evaluate your pricing strategy first before you even give out a coupon code. But once you know your pricing strategy and you know what your thresholds are for when you give out discounts, implement them. It'll only help you get more business later. See, and then you can also implement, you can also integrate a Google map with your store's address if you need to. And also a descript a description showing where your storefront is or whatever the uh the address points to. Maybe it's to a customer service fulfillment center. And that is what this is a sample. This is a sample thank you page right here shown in the demo. You can build it with the with the drag and drop builder. The coupon code is shown at the top. You have your order confirmation. And then you have your customer information and shopping cart overview. And you can structure this in different methods as well, different layouts. See how easy it is to build a thank you page with their drag and drop builder. You can move stuff around. And if you know CSS, you can add some custom coding to customize the appearance of the page, such as colors. It's very customizable, as, as you see here. And you can build your page based on these simple copy and paste short codes. And that was a very simple, straightforward demo. Oops. Now, this one is also a very important one to have because it can help you retarget customers who have abandoned shopping carts at your store. WooCommerce Cart Abandonment Recovery. Now, this plugin allows you to... Capture the emails of customers who signed up in for or made an account into your store. They added items to their carts, but they didn't com they didn't complete the checkout process within 15 minutes. They left the items in their cart and they never purchased them. So now, after 15 minutes, the customers who did not complete their checkout process will be sent a series of automated emails reminding them to complete their purchases and even provide a coupon code encouraging them to complete their checkout. Like here's the power of coupon codes again. So customers who accept these discount offers will be sent a pre-filled checkout form so they do not have to fill out the entire form all over again. 
This again stresses the importance of making things easier for the customer. The less forms they have to fill out, the more enticed they'll feel to complete their purchases and shop at your store. The plugin gives you an overview page in the admin panel showing you how many recoverable orders you have. This is 54. In this example, there are 54 recoverable orders. These could be from different customers who did not check out the process, or who did not finish checking out, I should say. It tells you right there how many you could possibly retarget so that they can check out, check out and you can get recover that lost revenue. Recovered orders, 32 recovered orders in this example. These are actual orders that this plugin retargeted. The people who abandoned their shopping carts went back in and checked out. So, And then lost orders. These are orders that were never recovered. The customer never went through and checked out. Maybe they emptied their shopping cart or something. Those are orders that were lost out on. It even gives you an idea of how much revenue you're missing out on if your customer does not complete their checkout process. You'll also see how much revenue was recovered by customer, thanks to customers who did fulfill their orders. And then you'll also see a recovery rate, a percentage. This is a total percentage of recovered orders after abandonment. And you can filter out this information based on the day, the week, or the month. As you see at the top, there are some buttons to filter that information out. Load More Products is a plugin that gets rid of pagination on your shop page or your search results page, and it gives the customer a page with a continuous scroll. Pagination basically means that your search results, like you see on Google and other websites, are divided by numbered pages, page one, page two, page three, page four, and so on. And this eliminates that. Instead of having to click on different pages, the next set of results on the following pages just appear as you scroll further and further down the page. So instead of having to click on page two, they'll appear right at the bottom of the page past the results of page one you'll see page two's results just appear and you just keep scrolling and then page three's results show up it eliminates that need to have to keep clicking on different pages the less clicks your customer have to make the better it is for them the yith woocommerce wish list this is a this is also very important because wish lists can boost sales because they allow your customers to keep track of items that they have shown interest in so that they can possibly buy them later. And eBay has this a similar feature. Theirs is called the watch list, where if you see an item that you want to keep an eye on because you don't want to miss out on it, you can add it there just to see when the sale ends or how many bids are being made on it. On your store, you'll want to have a wish list where customers can add certain items that they have interest in they can build a list up they can pull up this list and that way they'll remember that this is an item that they had that they had their eye on that they want to buy if they don't have the ability to save this in a wish list on their account they may struggle to find that item later and therefore you'll lose out on a sale wish lists also allow you your customers to share them on social media which can spark additional sales from new customers maybe the person who saw that product that they were interested in, didn't buy it, but somebody that they shared it to on social media did. The power of social media is great. The side cart. So this goes back to what I said earlier about making sure that you have a shopping cart that is easier for your customers to access and find, and it's not overwhelming. Remember, I said earlier that the less clicks a customer has to make, the better it is for them. And that's in any part of the shopping process, not just on the cart, but it is more important per se on the checkout process. This plugin, the site cart, adds a small button to the bottom right-hand corner of your site that displays the entire shopping cart in a slide-out pop-up 
that slides out from the right hand side of the site. So in the example, you'll see the button, which looks like a shopping basket. And they click on that. This pop up slides out and it shows the products in your cart and your subtotal. And a quick button to check out. If you want to view a page that has the entire cart, there is a button there to do to do so. The view cart button loads an entire page just for the shopping cart itself. This helps reduce shopping cart abandonment by making it easier for the customer to find their cart and check out quick and easily. Remember, if they can't easily find your shopping cart, if they can't access it easily, they're going to go somewhere else. Always keep that in mind. And now we are on our final lecture, promotional strategies to create awareness. So the purpose of this lecture is to help you create a nice strategy to create some awareness among your customer base. There are different ways you can do this. The first two questions you need to know uh, that you need to know the answers to before you can even create a strategy is what are you promoting and how are you going to get the word out? Now, if you're serious about your holiday season marketing, you need to start thinking about this right now. Starting earlier allows you to take advantage of creating competitive advantages over others if you promote specials early. Maybe you have some sort of early bird special that you want to push out there before all your competitors are decide to do one. Maybe your competitors aren't doing any sort of specials at all, but you want to get your customers ready and you want them to start shopping now. So having some sort of special ahead of time before everybody does their holiday shopping can get them to come to your store versus your competitor who's charging full price still. Maybe they're not, they're not thinking about that right now. They maybe wait until November or around Thanksgiving to start doing some holiday season promotions. Once you know what you want to promote, such as new products, maybe you're promoting a discount or some sort of limited time offer, then you need to know how are you going to get the word out? Is it going to be on your website? Is it going to be through text messaging, social media, email marketing? And if you're a serious marketer, you'll keep all of these in mind. Remember that if you have an enticing promotion, but with no way for the customer to engage and actually purchase what you're trying to promote or take or partake of the promotion, it's useless. No call to action means no sale, no engagement. You have to make sure that all of your call to actions are, are easy to see. Make sure they're present on your pop-ups, your social media posts, and any other materials that you're using to promote your offers or your products. Try to offer your customers something they cannot refuse. For example, if you offer free shipping, gift wrapping, or any other type of limited time offers, make sure that they know about this and make sure that you're upfront about it. Make sure that they can see it. People like it when you offer free shipping and other little freebies like that that'll get them to, to buy. They know that they're saving money. For example, if you're offering discounts on certain quantities of certain products or on certain amounts in their carts or by even by signing up for email blasts or credit cards or loyalty programs, that's great. Make sure that they know that you offer that. Look at what your com competitors are doing. What are they doing to create, to create awareness? Take a look at the example shown here. This is a pop-up. You have a huge a huge offer mentioned to enjoy 15% off on your first order at Bobble Bar plus free shipping over $25. All you have to do is enter your email address and the button to get started is in red, giving it prominence. And the not right now button, which you do not want your customers to click is in black because it blends in with the rest of the text. Having that red button stands out. So, Make sure that your call to action stands out like it is shown here. It's in red or some other type of bright contrasting color. And make sure that you have an offer that people just can't refuse. 15% off sounds good, especially if the products you're selling are known to be rather pricey. 
Try holding a contest or a giveaway. It's the easiest way to generate some buzz around your brand, especially if you're trying to create awareness. What can you give away? For can You, you want to give away some cash? Do you want to give away some coupons, gift cards, maybe even free products? You're going to want to promote these heavily on social media, especially on social media platforms that rely on visuals such as Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Certain examples of drawing contests include taking polls, captioning photos, or asking for followers. In this example from Siggy's Yogurt, they are giving away a free month of Siggy's. All you have to do is like the post and leave a comment, and one winner is drawn at random. Also specify if you're only open to certain regions. Here they specify that they're only open to U.S. residents only. Rewards and loyalty programs. We see these with the big guys all the time, such as Kroger and CVS. This, this is a great way to create some repeat customers because when you offer rewards for purchases made up to a certain amount, your customers will keep coming back for more. So if your customers register for your loyalty program, offer them discounts and freebies and other enticing things that'll get them to that'll entice them to keep shopping only at your store. You'll need to make sure that your cut that your website offers a portal where your customers can manage their rewards and see how many points they've had. So here is an example. This one is from CVS. Their extra care rewards program. The overview page in the portal shows how much has a customer saved, how much, how much money can they redeem their points they've racked up for, and then also make sure you give them the option to shop to earn more points. So they had they had a search box where you can search for products, and then if you do a search for set products. You will, see, you will get a list of coupons. You will get a list of products that have offers. And you can filter them out based on category. They have a button where once you see one that you like, you just click on it and it'll send it to your card. Then all you have to do is purchase the product and you can redeem, you can redeem the points or get the offer. The coupon offer, that is. You can get, in this example, you can... You can automatically get $2 in extra bucks just by hitting that plus button. Maybe you want to save $2 on Tide Pods. All you would have to do is click the send a card button. And then when you actually buy the Tide Pods, the discount would be applied automatically. This is a great way to keep your customers engaged and interested because you're trying to help them save money. You want to... You'll want to make sure that you're offering perks exclusive to your members. Don't just give these discounts and these free products away to anybody. Make sure that they're registered for your loyalty program first. This example here is from Pizza Hut's Hut Rewards Program. It offers members points based on how much they have spent on past orders, and it allows them to be redeem redeemable for free items such as chicken wings, breadsticks, free pizzas, and stuff like that. If you want to do something like this, a plugin that I can recommend would be smile.io or woo rewards. And that'll help you get a nice reward program set up easily in your WooCommerce store. Remember, social media is one of your most important tools. You have to use social media if you're serious about creating awareness. Creating social media accounts a lot uh, lets you know where your audience is. You'll want to start thinking about what you want to post. Always post something that is engaging, su such as with the examples that I shown you earlier. Posts should always ask the audience something, and they should always be eye-catching. Try to avoid using plain text posts whenever you can, because people don't really look at those. People like to look at color and visuals and graphics. They don't really read unless it's presented in a nice format. If you present your information in a nice graphical format, they're going to see it. But if it's just plain text and nothing else, they're probably not going to read it, especially if it's very wordy. 
Make sure you're promoting your products and you're all and you offer exclusive discounts to your followers. Make sure that you can offer in-app checkout, such as on Instagram. You can sell products on Instagram. You can put a post up that has a button where they can easily tap on it to buy it right there within the app. That's a great way to make some sales without them even having to go to your website. Remember to promote your products. But you don't want to appear salesy by putting out only promotional posts. You don't want to just keep putting out posts saying, buy this, buy that, endlessly. It In person, we don't like it when salespeople approach us and they try to hard sell us on something we don't want to buy. The same rule applies on social media. If you look too salesy, you're not going to look very, you're just not going to look very friendly and people are not going to feel at home. You don't want to just endlessly push products on your audience. Remember the 80-20 rule. 80% of your posts should interact, educate, inspire, entertain, and connect with your audience. 20% of your posts should be promotional. You'll want to leverage social media to promote products you're selling, but don't make yourself look like that all you care about is selling. Show that you want to engage with your customers by teaching them something new or by making them laugh or just by simply showing that you want to reach out to them like a human person would and talk with them. You can start conversations on social media. Make posts that are centered on making your customers feel at home, such as pictures of the of happy customers or of your or of happy employees working at your company, show them that they like working there and that the, and that your customers are happy, that so happy enough that it gives off that friendly vibe. Make sure you include testimonials from happy customers. Encourage your customers to leave reviews on social media. So that way other people will see which products are buying from you, which services you're offering. So that way you that way future customers probably will buy that product. Don't forget about email and text messaging marketing. Utilize email marketing to inform customers about the latest specials and new products. When you use email, you could probably pro uh, promote latest specials and new products a little bit more because email marketing is not as personal as social media. You can be a little bit more salesy with that, but you'll still want to make sure you maintain a friendly appearance in your emails. You can you can make emails with using platforms such as Constant Contact and MailChimp. It'll help you keep track of your analytics so you can see how many emails are being sent out, who's opening them. And then you can utilize text messaging marketing to promote these same specials. Tech, on text messaging, you can include, of course, text. You can include photos. You can include GIFs, animated GIFs, and links to the pages that you want people to see. And that concludes our lecture. Now, if, if anybody has any questions, this will be our question and answer session. And I'm going to read the chat to see if anybody has anything to say. I would love to answer some of your questions if you'll have any. Just reading through the chat. Yes, yes. Um, Yeah, most, most of the loading for Google takes about three seconds anyway. That should be the rule. When I say loading, I mean when you open a website, it should take three seconds or less to load up when you open any website. Not just from Google, but anytime you pull up a website. And yes, it is annoying if you can't check out as a guest. It makes things faster. It does keep, it does keep your customers who are on the go and don't have time to check out in mind. Yeah. That's that's pretty much that's pretty much it and everything everything I went over is is all advice that I would like all 
business owners who have who have an e-commerce website or simply needs uh, simply needs uh, optimization, I, I, I feel like you all need to keep those in mind. All business owners need to keep all this advice in mind. You need promotion is key to creating awareness. If people don't know you exist or they don't know about the about all these awesome offers that you have going, how are they going to buy from you? Always make sure that your website loads fast, people can find it, and that all of your most important sellers are are up front, your most important hot sellers. What are people buying? Look at your analytics. Promote those heavily. Make sure they are of higher priority on your website and on social media versus your lower priority products that maybe they sell a moderate amount or they don't really sell that much at all. Yeah. Utilize social media. Monitor your analytics. Make sure that you check out all the plugins that I mentioned in the lecture in mind. Install them on your website if you have WooCommerce. Always keep your customers in mind. Make sure that they have an easy way to get in contact with you if they need to contact you about anything. That's especially true for customer service. In our last lecture, we talked about chatbots. We've talked about using social media messaging. Make sure you have a page in your website focused on customer service that is full of self-help articles and contact information. And of course, make sure you have your customer service contact information in your thank you pages and also on the email sent out to your customers after they check out. But that's going to be it for the lecture. I thank you guys for coming. I thank you guys for, for coming and checking it out. Please feel please remember to share this if you know anybody who has an online store or is thinking about starting a business especially if they're thinking about starting a business where they want to sell online. And make sure you check out part one if you have not watched part one already. And let's go raid Trilogy Media. I just put a link in the chat. They are streaming right now. Okay, thanks for coming, guys. I put a link to, the, to Trilogy stream. Let's go raid them and check them out. Have a good one.